When you look at cow comfort and the relation with longevity, and I think that the key message in this, in this whole matter is watching your cows. As a farmer, you should look at your cows, you should uh, look what they're doing, you should read their language, you should try to understand what they're trying to tell you. For example, if, if a cow is standing in a cubicle, it means that she wants to tell you, hey, this cubicle isn't good, I don't want to lie down here. If she's evading, avoiding certain areas of the barn, it means that those areas usually have a bad climate and therefore they don't want to go there. If they're lying halfway in the cubicles or halfway outside of the cubicles, it means that the cubicle design isn't right, it's too small or the bedding isn't appropriate, those kind of things. If you see certain injuries on your cows, you know that they have been hurt by the stanchions or, or the dividers of the cubicles or the feed rack, those kind of things. So watch your cows, that's my main message for cow comfort and cow longevity. The conclusion from my research is that cows put higher priority on lying time than feeding time. And if we restrict the hours cows have available for lying and eating, they actually prioritize lying so much that they give up some of their feed intake and that led in the study we did to a reduction in milk production. We have been doing a lot of research on walking and standing areas during the last 10 years and we found that there are different factors involved. It's uh, the hygiene, it's the friction and it's the softness of the flooring. And all these aspects has to be uh, as good as possible. When dairy cows are provided a mixed ration, they'll often select different components of that ration. Even though we try to provide them the best mixed ration possible, they'll selectively consume parts that they, they like. And particularly, they'll select against the longer forage particles and for the shorter, uh, higher energy grain particles. And, and when they do that, uh, they're basically throwing off their, their rumen balance or their rumen dynamics, which is hugely costly for the producer. So this behavior, the sorting behavior, can be directly linked to drops in milk fat production, which um, particularly in scenarios where producers are paid for based on the components of their milk, uh, this can be a, a huge expense. We recommend to cool all the cows in the herd, of course, high-yielding cows, fresh cows, but also dry cows. We calculated the amount of milk produced in the, those herds which are intensively cooling cows and we compared it to herds which do not cool the cows. And what we found is that in 305 days in all lactation period, cooled cows in cooling herds produced around 800 kilograms per lactation more than non-cooled non cows. Around four degrees below zero is the temperature that uh, a cow would have maximum feed intake and produce maximum amount of milk. But it's not an exact temperature, it's a range. So say between minus 10 and plus five, plus 10, that's the, the ideal temperature for a cow, for a whole sign Friesian high producing cow. If we don't cool the cows, then cows will drink more water and urinate it. So from water consumption point of view, it is more efficient and more water saving to cool cows than non-cool cows. Cows need at least 10 hours of lying time uh, because we have uh, several studies that suggest that if you force cows to stand uh, so their lying time is less than 10 hours a day, that would induce uh, quite severe stress responses both physiological and behavioural stress responses. A concrete floor is used on all farms, you can say, and it's a very good material for constructions. But concrete is changing with time. In the beginning it's too abrasive and in, after a couple of years it gets too slippery. So you have to either put a, a sur other surface on top of, of the concrete or you have to uh, grow the concrete to reduce the slipperiness but you don't necessarily have to put rubber on in all areas. So the first areas to put rubber on would be the holding pen, because then a lot of animals can make uh, uh, have, uh, benefit of the rubber for a low cost. Next step would be the feeding area in front of the manger, and the th third step would be the alleys. 
with, with their free stalls. When we are moving, or when farmers are moving cows from one group to the other, the cow should find her position in the hierarchy. And even though the diet is the same, there are, we, we have shown in one study, and there are also other studies that have shown that this can have a cost in terms of reduced milk production for up to three to four weeks. These days the farms are getting bigger, you get more cows, you get more people working on a farm and also the advisory part and the consultancy part should be getting more emphasis and it's becoming more and more important because the stakes are getting higher and if these people work together as a team then you get more, um, more teamwork and more profit and a better life for the cows, a better life for the farmer, a better life for everybody, everybody involved.